station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Station. Radio Iowa, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Matt Kelly with Radio Iowa. Do you hear me? I have you loud and clear, Matt. It's good to hear your voice. You too, Peggy. It's always a pleasure. Thanks much for taking the time. One of the ways that many of us celebrate Christmas is with a big meal with family. Tell me about your dinner plans on Sunday with your space station family. Well, we have a, a meal planned. We, um, each of us kind of took responsibility for a different meal and, and made sure we had um, the appropriate types of food available. Uh, we're going to do kind of a combination between Christmas and New Year's. Tomas doing a French New Year's dinner for us. And uh, Shane is providing us with uh, uh, a more traditional U.S. type uh, uh, meal for Christmas. But the one other special thing that we have is we brought up some frosting and we're going to try and make some Christmas cookies. Basically, we have little cookies in packages and we're going to try and decorate them. I think we should have a contest, but the guys don't seem too game on the contest idea. I heard tell you're going to have some hot cocoa, too. Yeah, we've got some hot cocoa on board, too. I saw on the video feed earlier you do have a little Christmas tree. Is there anything under the tree? I guess you can't exactly go out to Target and pick something up, but do you exchange Christmas gifts with the crew? Actually, we've got a few surprises planned for each other. We don't yet know what they are, but um, I, I, I had some stuff brought up with me in my uh, crew preference bag, and uh, so I'm looking forward to giving some gifts on Christmas. There was a video posted a few days ago where you talked about Christmas on the space station in the context of being able to, uh, it was kind of Apollo 8-ish. You talked about looking out and seeing the entire planet in peace. Talk, uh, expand a little about that for me. Well, I think the perspective of our planet here is very special, and it does provide you with the sense that there is no boundaries, that, you know, this we're a planet, we are a people, and, and it kind of reinforces the fact that we should be uh, together and at peace. What about New Year's Eve for you in orbit? Is there, uh, I guess there's no popping of champagne corks, or is it more kind of a time for reflection for you? No champagne corks. I don't know if we'll have any New Year's resolutions or not. We might. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm not sure whether people are going to be worried about gaining weight or losing weight. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to ask you about resolutions. Um, on your previous missions, there were only two other astronauts with you on the station, and now there's a crew of six. Do you ever feel the need for more personal space this time around? And if so, how do you get it? Actually, well, since I flew the last time, we've probably increased the internal volume by almost 30 percent. So it's actually not really feeling very crowded at all up here. Uh, there's still many days where I work by myself in a module on a task, and the guys are in their own modules, and maybe one of the Russians will come down and ask, uh, hey, where's Shane? And I, I'm like, I don't know. You have to go look. <laughs> So it, we don't really feel too crowded here. Actually, it's very nice to be able to have an opportunity uh, at meal times, uh, usually lunch, uh, but always at dinner time to get together and talk and share what we were doing over the day and what was hard, what was funny. What it's it's fun to get together at the end of the day. Kind of along those same lines, you're the only woman up there with five men. Even on a space station, I suspect the guys can be guys. Is there ever any uh, uncomfortable times for you? I mean, do you have to be kind of the mom or the older sister, or are they all behaving and being respectful? Oh, these guys are actually really wonderful. I am really privileged to work with them. You said that one of your biggest challenges on these long missions is, uh, long missions is a lack of variety in your space food. Uh, you've got a Frenchman with you this time, so has that uh, improved the situation for you? Well, actually, uh, Takuya Onishi, a Japanese guy, was up here before, and he didn't he didn't get to eat all his bonus food. So we've been tasting on that as well as Thomas Pesquet's French food. So we're having a good time with a little bit more variety than normal. Um, I don't know how long the the uh, leftover Japanese food will last, but uh, 
hopefully we'll be able to share some more of Tomas' French food. You're still listed as flight engineer. When do you again become the commander, and is there a ceremony for that, and how does that change your daily routine? Yeah, now that we have six-person crew, uh, the two Soyuzes actually overlap, and so the, the uh, commander on the station is the experienced person that was on board prior to our arrival. And um, we will change over when he goes away, then I will become the commander uh, for the second half of the mission. Uh, so it should be in uh, uh, the end of February or April, whenever that, that event happens. And then we will have a, a handover ceremony, per se, of handing over that command. Fantastic, Peggy. I'm told we're out of time. Thank you again very much for the time. Uh, Godspeed from Iowa. Thanks, and you guys try and stay warm there. <laughs> we will. Got a cold front coming in. It might have snow for Christmas. Station, this is Houston. Sounds ACR. like it's been very cold there. That concludes the event. And guests from Radio Iowa. Station, please stand by while we reconfigure video and audio communications.